Hey there, everybody. It's your buddy Chopadong. Sunday morning, early, early start to the MLB DFS uh, day of games. We've got a nine game slate. I want to show you a very easy way to build cash game lineups like I did yesterday. If you didn't follow that or didn't see that, catch that video, of course, you can always go back and take a peek. Uh, I don't believe we made the cash line. We were about 61st out of 100 in the 50 50 that I played in, but that's going to happen. We were we were close most of the night. We were pretty close. We nailed a lot of the very, very high ownership plays that were 60 and 70% owned. And when that happens and you get off to about a five or 10 point slow start, it's just not going to happen for you that night because you don't have anybody that can jump everybody else on the leaderboard because you really don't have a low owned player. There are a few times when it is advantageous to have that lower owned player, but we don't typically play that way in a cash game because we're not looking to seek leverage. We're looking for everybody else to make a mistake. We're looking to be in the herd, be in the crowd. There's safety in numbers like a school of fish, like a herd of buffalo, and we want to stay in that herd and move with that herd. We may accidentally take a couple of low-owned plays. Those work out, we score. Those don't work out, we fail. But generally speaking, we're just trying to build off of ownership and sensible plays. And I'll show you how to do that inside the Domination Station lineup. And then we'll, I'll even show you a swap or a pivot. This is going to be FanDuel again because it's easier to build from there in the DFS Army Optimizer. You use the ownership projection, sort by them from top to bottom. No player catch, no fancy business. We set it up very simply. We use optimal mode for cash game lineups, two unique players. We're going to build three lineups, and that's it. No randomness, no fancy, fancy bells and whistles, nothing. No team stacking. If it happens, it happens. We've got a few offenses that we could target today. Chicago playing Pittsburgh is a great spot to start. St. Louis playing Cincinnati is a great spot to start, along with a couple of others, but those are generally the teams that should do the most damage. They are offenses that are scoring a lot of runs that are facing Obviously, defenses and pitching staffs that are giving up a lot of runs, and that's usually a pretty good place to start when it comes to predicting behavior. Now, I start off by unchecking everybody, and I go position by position, and I check back the players that I want. And I'm looking for giant gaps in these ownership projections. A big drop from 45% to 21% tells me most people are going to be on Garrett Cole today. That's fine. 8,800, super cheap. Don't care if he's stretched out or not. If 50%, 60%, 70% are on Garrett Cole. He does not hurt us at all. If he does great, we do great with everybody else. If he does poorly, sure, it looks like you could have taken some leverage there. But if this, if he's 70% owned, there's still over a 20% chance that with him, you're still going to cash because you just don't have to win the entire contest in a cash game. That's the nature of them. You just place in the top half to collect your money and move on. It's pretty simple. I look at catchers just to see, and the 17% catcher is pretty highly owned. I checked him because when I get over to first base, because catcher and first base are combined on FanDuel, I see a 30% and then a 16% and a 15%. I guess you could check Schwindel if you wanted to, too, because the drop-off goes down to Guerrero. 30%, Brandon Belt, probably the play we should be on, but we'll leave a little bit of wiggle room for the optimizer with Paul Goldschmidt, Frank Schwindel, and, of course, over here at the catcher spot in Wilson Contreras. These are okay cash plays. They may not be where we focus. We probably focus on Brandon Belt, but these are okay. Slight pivots, if you will. Go over to second base. Javier Baez jumped up to 17%. So, and as lineups confirm, as these things roll out through the day, these projections will change. So this is an early look, and this is you're going to see differences in an hour or two from now. But you go back and you check, and I'm looking typically for about three Three highly owned players per position. Because, it, yeah, there's a drop-off here between Happ and Bias. I could probably just roll with Happ at 2,700 and be fine with it. But if the optimizer gets stuck when I build a lineup, I want to include a couple of choices. VR has multi-position eligibility in three spots. 2,500 bucks. He's not the worst. It probably will not pick up on Bias at 3,400 because he's a little bit expensive for what they can also put in that position. And then where else you can go at first base or third base and pay up a little bit by taking some value at second base. It's usually the way the optimizers work. But of course, there's a big drop off down here from 16% to 11%. So we can go ahead and cut it off there. Wilmer Flores just missed the cut, whatever. Not a big deal. Third base, VR, Key Brian Hayes, Alex Bregman. You could include Arenado drop 12%. I'm sorry, I'm not discluding Arenado. 
with the way that he's playing this spring or this early season. Chris Bryant would be okay to maybe add in if you felt the need. We'll see about out outfield in a minute. Shortstop Brandon Crawford has the lead of the position in ownership, but Javier Baez and Jonathan Villar aren't too far behind. Then there's a drop-off to Bo Bichette. So I would check those three, let it go. And outfield's usually where you're going to take your depth. There's a lot of guys down here in the low teens to the high teens to the low 20s. That's where you're going to take a lot of your value, a lot of your depth. This is where you can get a little cute. You want to include an Aaron Judge at 20% instead of 25% chalky Ian Happ. That's fine. You want to drop down a little bit more, you know, and put a Suzuki in there at 13%. I'm not going to fight you too hard on that. That's okay. But generally speaking, I'm looking to stay right up here in the height. And Grossman made it into the lineup as well because the projections changed from just my last run five minutes ago. But now that I've got things set up, you could argue Tyler O'Neill's not a cash play or Aaron Judge. He's too boomer butt. That's fine. Un uncheck those guys if you want. Okay, this is your player pool. This is just a way to put you on the majority of the solid plays that you're going to find out there today. If you're having trouble with your research in narrowing things down and identifying what it is that you're looking for. When you're done, you just click optimize and run three lineups. Come down here and take a peek at them. You've got a very tight player pool of about 12 players. You've got a lot of guys in all three lineups. This is kind of like your cash core, if you will. Cole, Belt, Hap, Crawford, Meadows, Goldschmidt. There you go. And then the others, you can pick and choose the lineups. But you ran three lineups. Take your pick. Garrett Cole is obviously the pitcher you're going to use. And then Brandon Belt, Ian Hap, Alex Bregman made the list. He's a fine play. If you look at his uh, game logs lately, he's been playing very well. Brandon Crawford, Austin Meadows, Yastrzemski, Judge, Goldschmidt. Not a bad lineup. Three Giants. There's Arenado and Goldschmidt for a one-two punch. Robbie Grossman, right? There's a couple of mini stacks in here. Aaron Judge makes the lineup. If you like this one better, run it. This is just searching, sifting back and forth, and looking at some of these lineups that make some sense. They're using the same players. They're just shuffling them around a little bit. There's a three stack of Cardinals if you wanted. I had a three stack of Cubs earlier in a lineup that I used with the Cardinals. It was Garrett Cole, Brandon Belt, Ian Happ, Nolan Arenado, Brandon Crawford, Austin Meadows, uh, Mike Yastrzemski, Tyler O'Neill, and Paul Goldschmidt. And again, that's okay too. But if I don't like, say, Tyler O'Neill, I can always come in here and I can swap him out. Let's say I like Aaron Judge in that lineup better. I want to get rid of some of the, you know, the, the heavy Cardinal stuff. Now I've got two, three mini stacks, two Giants, two Detroit Tigers, and two Cardinals with a Yankee one-off tied to Garrett Cole. This is not a bad lineup either. If you want to break things up even further, you can come down here and see if there's anybody that you can't take for, say, an Austin Meadows. You want to use your Stremski there? Fine. You want to use a Brian Reynolds there? Fine. You've got options. You come up here to an expensive third baseman in Arenado, and you could put Alex Bregman in there for him. Easy enough. If you like Alex Bregman, you could put Tyler O'Neill back in for Aaron Judge. Keep your Cardinals at three or at two and use Alex Bregman instead of Arenado. And now you're a little bit similar to this lineup up here that used Bregman. So Belt, Hap, Bregman, Crawford, Meadows, Yastrzemski, Judge, Goldschmidt. But down here, Belt, Hap, Bregman, Crawford, Grossman, Meadows, O'Neill, Goldschmidt. It's a couple of hot players different. These are all fine lineups. Don't get too bent out of shape over if it's the perfect play or if it's not the perfect play. If the industry's on them, the ownership's going to be high you're going to catch the majority of the cheap leadoff guys like a Rafi Ortega or something like that. You're just not using them today. But you're going to take advantage of what everybody else in the industry is talking about to build your player pool, and then you're going to assemble the best lineup that you can from there and take your chances from that point. This is going to produce solid cash lineups day in and day out with very little research and very little effort. It's what I tell people when I say that DFS Army has the tools. We've already done all the lifting. We've put in all of the ownership projections. We've put in all of the player projections. We've put in ceiling projections. We've put in the tool in the optimizer that will stack or not stack, depending on what you want. In fact, why don't we just show you how we would make tournament lineups really quickly. I would come back up here. I would go to all. I would check everybody back. I didn't change any projections. I didn't change a thing. But let's say I wanted to make 100 lineups. So let's make 80 lineups. might be a little bit faster. 
I'd switch to tournament mode. This shuffles your players better. It mixes them in and out. I might come down to a three uniques, maybe even a four uniques. Really load up that player. I'm going to include a lot of randomness because it's baseball. 25, 30, 40 percent, all fine. It's not a small slate. We don't need to allow hitters against our pitchers. But now we can go into the stacking mode and we can choose our formations. Let's say I just wanted to run a bunch of 4xx and a bunch of 4x3. Let's say I wanted to run 25% 4x3 stacks, 4 from one team, 3 from another team. And then with the other 25%, I wanted to run just a regular 4 stack and let the optimizer fill in if it uses 2, 3, or 4 players for me. I can come over here, I can set the weights and the, and the parameters that I want. One thing that I do on the stack 2 side is I like to go ahead and use a projection-based heavy set of 0 to 40%. We've worked on systems inside our VIP program. It works very, very well. We're letting the projections choose that second stack. Now over here on the first stack, I can start organizing teams that I want access to. Like I know I can be on small teams. Let's say I just wanted to take the top five teams on the slate today. I'd be looking at, in terms of runs scored, facing teams that allow runs, I'd be looking at Detroit, San Francisco, Miami, believe it or not, St. Louis, and Chicago. So there's St. Louis, and there's the Chicago Cubs. Just for reference, the Chicago Cubs are facing the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Pittsburgh Pirates are allowing four runs per game. The Chicago Cubs are scoring 54, or 5.4 runs per game. I'm sorry, Pittsburgh's allowing 5.0 runs per game, and Chicago is is scoring 5.4 runs per game. That adds up, if you take the decimal point out, 10.4 or 104 power score points. That's the highest on the slate. The next best is St. Louis. St. Louis scores 5.3, or is facing Cincinnati, who allows 5.3 runs per game. St. Louis is scoring 4.5 runs per game. Added up, you get a 98, 9.8 power score. These are big numbers, 94 for San Francisco, 81 for Detroit, 83 for Miami. When you come down the list a little bit, I can post this if you guys want inside our Discord. It's super easy to do. You've got really, really low numbers on the slate. You've got 53 out of Cincinnati. St. Louis is only giving up, only allowing 2.7 runs per game as a pitching staff, and Cincinnati is only scoring 2.6 runs themselves. That adds up to 53. So you've got 104 in Chicago and 53 in Cincinnati. You're more likely to score runs or have a good fantasy day with Chicago than you are Cincinnati today, just as a frame of reference. So if I just allowed these top five teams, and let's say I just wanted 25% of each of those teams, and I want it mixed and matched with everybody else, I can usually run 80 lineups off of this in a stacked formation in just the blink of an eye. You can see it cranking along. If it stops, I add some teams in there, or I up my percentages and allow it to take on more players, whatever the case may be. But now I'm largely on these stacks. Detroit, San Francisco, St. Louis, Chicago. Who did I leave out? Miami. It didn't pick up any Miami in a four stack. That's interesting, because it used basically 25% of all of these other teams instead. But down here, it started picking up some Houston, some Toronto, some Colorado to mix and match with these big stacks. If Detroit, San Francisco, St. Louis, and Chicago have a good day, then it's just who I paired them with as to how well I do, because I'm going to be set up everywhere. Now, if Houston goes off and Chicago has a decent day, this might be a stack that works. I may have wanted four Houston players and I only got three. That's fine. It's not going to be a tournament winner, but it might get me deep enough you know, to turn a dollar into 10 or $20. You just never know. This is the nature of baseball, and these are the things that we talk about every single day inside DFSArmy.com. You can look at some of these lineups and the way that they shake out. There's a 1-2-3-4 San Francisco, 1-2-3 Cubs with a one-off of Paul Goldschmidt and Garrett Cole as the pitcher. It's it just these lineups are going to build winners. It's what we've done for two years now. We're ahead of the curve, and we're teaching people every day how to do the same thing. If this is an advantage that you would like to take advantage of, you come inside DFSArmy.com, use the coupon code DFSArmy, hit us up, talk to us, we'll show you how to set these tools up, we'll show you how to get the most bang for your buck, and turn you into a competitive DFS MLB player. Sunday morning, guys, peace out, just 15 minutes really quick of cash talk, tournament talk, and I think we've just covered all the bases for FanDuel today. Have a good one, good luck to you, hopefully you win a lot of money.